If you want to start your PhD, the first thing that comes to your mind is how can I apply and get a scholarship to fund my PhD? It is a question, a very common question among all the students who want to pursue their PhD. In this video, I'm going to share my insights on what you should do to prepare a strong application so that you are successful in your scholarship. I have been on several scholarship application panels and I understand what is it that the panel members look when they want to assess or when they're assessing PhD scholarship applications. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Vidhi Potdar. I'm an associate professor and you're watching a series of talks aimed at understanding the PhD process. I want to help you in your PhD journey and want to make it a memorable one. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first thing that we assess when we are looking at a PhD scholarship applicant is how have they scored in their undergraduate and postgraduate degrees? Have you scored distinctions, higher distinctions, or if you just have a pass or a credit? These are some of the indications that give us the pan give the panel an idea of your capability as a, as a student. The second that we assess is, do you have research experience? Have you undertaken an undergraduate or a postgraduate research thesis or a dissertation as part of your degree. If you have done that, you get an understanding that you are capable of doing research and that you would be a potentially a good candidate for doing your PhD. The third thing that the panel assesses is whether you have published in academic journals or conferences. Uh, it is a good indication if you have a couple of publications prior to applying for PhD. Uh, it just goes to show that you are capable of doing research and not just capable of doing research but uh, capable to document your research and your research findings. In fact, I have seen many students who have applied uh, for their PhD scholarship and they have four, five, six publications and such students normally have done their masters or MPhil. So they got, they have some research experience and they have utilized that experience to the best of their capability or to create multiple publications. So that is a very, very good indicator that you are capable of doing research and you would be an ideal candidate for scholarship. So one catch. We also keep a close eye on where you publish your, uh, publish your articles. So if you publish in a reputed, highly ranked journals or conferences, that adds value to your application. On the other hand, if you have published in some unknown journals or poor quality journals, it actually goes against your application. So what you should ideally do is look for journal rankings such as the ABDC journal ranking. Having said that, there's other rankings uh, that rank journal in multiple categories. So these categories are A star, that is the best of the best journals, A level A journals, B and C. So A and A star, uh, if you have any of those, that's the best uh, that you can have even before a PhD that will make your application really really stronger but even if you have a B journal that is also a good indicator to the panel that uh, you would be a potentially good uh, good candidate for getting the scholarship so keep an eye on where you publish don't go to any poor quality outlet to publish just for the sake of publishing fourth thing have you received any awards that show that you are a good and talented candidate uh, have you received a best student award or did you receive vice chancellor's commendation award? If you have received any awards, make sure that you mention that in your resume and highlight that aspect because that shows uh, that you are better than the, than the others. It, it, it is a sign that you are a capable uh, student. Next thing that we look for is your research experience. Have you worked in an industry setting or within a research institute in the capacity of a research assistant or in any role that involves some form of research? If you have done that, make sure that you highlight that clearly, outstandingly in your, in your application, in your resume, because that gives you a big tick uh, when assessing the application. Next, there are two things. Uh, these are kind of optional, but if you have, uh, that would be that would be good. One is if you have a YouTube channel or any other uh, media outlet where you have either spoken about uh, your research or you have written a blog. If you have something like that, make sure that you mention that as well. Uh, this gives the panel an opportunity to assess your 
presentation skills, your soft skills, and so on. And lastly, uh, and this is uh, really, really optional, and it does not apply to a lot of uh, uh, disciplines. And this is if you have any basic understanding of programming languages. And in these days, there is a lot of demand for uh, PhD students who are capable of doing or running their own simulations for their research. So if you have a basic understanding of languages such as Python, R or MATLAB, that is, that, that is desirable, not compulsory, but if you have that, you should mention that and it will definitely get you some more takes on your application. So there you go. These were my seven tips for preparing a strong PhD scholarship application. If you follow these tips, it is a very good chance that you will be successful. Also keep in mind, it takes time to prepare an application. So you cannot uh, have, you cannot start application and have all these seven points achieved. So if you want to do, if you have a plan to apply for a PhD or do your PhD and, uh, and apply for a scholarship, start preparing early because the biggest uh, time consuming part in this would be getting your publications. If you have three, four, five good quality publications, it will take time, but that will definitely add a lot of strength to your PhD scholarship application. Thank you very much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. If you have learned anything from this video, please, please, please hit the like button and share it with anyone you think would benefit from this video as well. If you haven't done already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell, bell icon so that you could be kept informed of any new videos that I do which would help you in your PhD journey. Thank you once again and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.